Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are going to be talking about interior design trends that are making a comeback. These are the things that maybe were in style in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever, and maybe they went out of style, but they're back again. And this just goes to show that every fashion, style, trends, they're all cyclical, right? I do think things tend to come back in a slightly different way, and that's really what I wanna highlight um, in this video today. It's like, you know, my dad always used to be like, you know, oh, these sweaters, I used to wear that sweater back in the 70s, so it's back, I guess I'm back in fashion again. Mm, no, you really aren't, you know what I mean? Like things come back usually a little bit different than they did before, and we're gonna talk about that in this video. But first, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, which is Milanote, which you all know I love so, so much. And that brings me to today's sponsor, which is Milanote. It is the note-taking app for creatives. Here's how I use Milanote. I use the pin extension tool, which just takes two seconds to download on Chrome and you're able to save any image that you see on the internet, any product that you wanna buy, any inspirational image that you think, that looks really amazing. I would love to bring a piece of that image into my own home. And you can save all those images and all those products onto different boards so that you can use them when you go to redecorate your place or whatever. For me, I'm using it a lot in my home in the Okanagan to make sure that I'm gathering these inspirational images, that I'm able to save these images that I want to buy. And rather than screenshotting them on my phone, which will probably get lost somewhere, I can actually save them into note-taking software so that I can actually create a project plan to make sure that I design the home that I really love. I highly encourage you to download Milanote and you can give it a go for yourself. It's free to start and you can go and take a look and start saving some of these images and really starting to create a project plan to create that home that you really love. So thank you Milanote for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, the first trend I'm gonna be talking about is sunken living rooms and sort of like the conversation pit. So this was really, really popular originally kind of in the 70s, but honestly, like we had a sunken living room even in the 90s. It was very, very popular to have the step down sunken living room. It was very luxurious and it is definitely back again. And I think this is a trend that I really, really like. I think I like it because it creates a clearly defined space for that conversation. I think so often people sort of build their living rooms as very sort of open concepts, which makes sense because that has been definitely the style over the last say 20 years or so. But there is something to be said about having a really clearly defined area that makes sense for people to have a conversation. And a sunken living room just sort of feels really cool. It's kind of got a really like retro 70s look to it. But again, it's really done sort of spruced up in a little bit more of a modern feel. It might sort of really limit the color palette a little bit, create something a little bit more modern, probably not carpeted the way that it was in the 90s like we had. You know it, you know it was that dusty rose carpet I've mentioned on this channel before. Yeah, it was a sunken living room with dusty rose carpet, very 90s, which we're gonna talk about some other 90s stuff that's making a comeback, but anyway. But even still, you know, we had that sunken living room with the carpet in and blah, 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 but now it's sort of being done, usually with much more elegant sort of engineered hardwood or a little bit more of some modern sort of streamlined furniture involved usually. So it's gonna feel a little bit fresher and a little bit more new and current. But I will say the disadvantage of a conversation pit or a sunken living living room is it really locks you in to that tight floor plan, which can be a challenge, I think, for a lot of people. So if you tend to be one of these people that rearranges your house a lot, if you tend to sort of kind of want to move your furniture all over the place, this may really lock you into a specific uh, space plan, which might be something uh, that you're not really ready for. I think that's one of the reasons why this trend doesn't maybe comes and goes is because people sort of remember, oh yeah, right. I kind of like the flexibility that comes with having a little bit more of an open space and having everything on one level but I would say it is still a really, really cool trend, gives it a little bit of a retro feel, and it really creates that conversation area and really sort of sections off a space for the family to get together and, you know, talk to each other. Remember, that was always fun. <laughs> it's always, we don't have to look at our phones all the time. That was fun to kind of have that area where you can sort of talk uh, amongst each other and it really sort of creates that tight, intimate feel, which I think is really, really cool. Okay, next trend I wanna talk about is individual rooms. So I think I've said this in my unpopular design opinions, one of them, that I think the death of the open concept is exaggerated, and I do believe that. I think, I don't really all buy in that everybody's putting up all these walls all the time, but I would say that if you have individual rooms in your home, because maybe you have a home that was built sort of in the 80s or 90s or earlier or whatever, and you had the formal living room, you had the dining area, then you had the family room or whatever, you had them spaced into different rooms, that is definitely a trend that does seem to kind of be coming back. I think 
think a lot of people, if they have those rooms, while the, you know, in the 2000s, 2010s, everybody was kind of like knocking down all those walls and creating these large great room concepts. I think a lot of people are keeping those rooms that are a little bit more sectioned off, which is interesting. I don't think an open concept is really dated in my opinion, like I said before, but I do think there is something to be said for having these individual rooms. Sort of that little sectioned off kitchen where you can actually cook, um, you know, pantry areas maybe that could be like a butler's pantry or maybe you've got a sink in there. You might even have some appliances so you can sort of do some of the kind of dirty work in the kitchen. You can do it in a sectioned off space rather than having it, you know, sprawled out on a large kitchen island, which has been the trend over the last couple of decades. I do think there's something there in that trend and there's an advantage to doing that, to section off those rooms. But I will also kind of include in this category things like room dividers, which are becoming increasingly popular. I'm seeing them so often now in retailers. Um, Sunday's Furniture has a really cool one, probably one of my favorites. You can find them on Wayfair. Ikea's got a very popular one. I'm seeing people sort of do cool things with DIYs and stuff with these room dividers. And that's really neat because it gives you a little bit more of a modular sort of way that you can sort of section off your space without necessarily committing to like putting up walls, which I think is a, a, a drastic solution to this sort of problem. So you're able to, if you've got a larger space, you're able to sort of section off different areas for maybe creating something a little bit more multi-purpose, which I think is really neat. And that is definitely something that feels a little bit retro and is definitely making a comeback. Okay, next interior design trend making a comeback is just the color beige and brown. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because I have talked about this in my warm minimalism sort of video or design style video that I talked about because it is so, so popular to see all these different sort of caramel, toffee, rich, brown, chocolatey, I'm getting hungry just thinking about this. All these different sort of colored brown sort of beigey tones. Yes, they're in. Yes, the warm tones are in. But I'm going to put it in this category of making a comeback because I lived through the 90s and I remember that beige that we all remember from the 90s. It was like you either had like a pink, you had like a, a sky blue, you had like a beige, or you had... What else would you have had? Yeah, blue, beige, dusty, peach. Remember the peach, the peach walls? Yeah, okay, that's not making a comeback. Don't, well, I do like those warm, uh, anyway, don't make that, I wouldn't paint your walls peach quite yet, but I do think those brown tones, those beige tones are definitely here. I will say they're a little bit more nuanced. I would say now a lot more richer colored tones. Um, and again, I do think the texture is a lot different and the materials being used nowadays are a lot different than we saw in the 90s kind of like what I was saying things come back but they come back a little bit more current so it has a lot more of like an organic feel to the uh, brown beige sort of warmer tones that we're seeing nowadays um, a lot more luxurious a lot more natural materials than we saw back in the 90s so I would say that that's it's, it's different but it's definitely back and that's I think you know uh, I don't know if you've been living under a rock but those warm beigey tones are everywhere okay next up is art deco now I see you all in the comment section being like, is Nick just single-handedly willing Art Deco to happen? Yes, maybe I am, maybe I am, but I'm going to do my part from my little living room to from my little perch here to try to bring Art Deco. I'm not saying I'm single-handedly doing it. A lot of people are on board with this. In fact, I will say, I even went to CB2's website yesterday and on their front page was like, Art Deco, click here. We've got all this whole collection of Art Deco stuff. Even mainstream retailers are definitely understanding that this trend is making a comeback. Now, this is not your 70s, 80s, 90s trend. This is your 1920s trends, right? This is definitely something that is making a comeback. I have a whole video on Art Deco if you want to check it out. It is a beautiful, amazing, fantastic, luxurious, gorgeous design style that's very, very cool and very, very back in. Okay, next up, trend that is back is colorful appliances. Listen, what I personally believe is I don't care for colorful appliances myself, just not really my style, but I will admit that when done in a really, really cool way, there are some really cool kitchens. Some people are doing some really funky kind of neat things. Uh, this is a very retro trend of having sort of colored appliances. And I feel like, you know, Smeg, I think is probably the appliance manufacturer that I see the most sort of leading the charge on the colored appliances. I'm seeing people paint their appliances Appliances. That's a thing. Go check it out on TikTok. Yes, you can find people painting their appliances. Am I going to tell you to whip out the roller brush and start painting your stainless steel? No, I'm not saying you should necessarily do that. That is up to you if you want to do that. 
you go for it, but I take no responsibility for how that looks when it's done. But these colorful appliances, let's assume that you're going out and actually purchasing colored appliances for yourself. They are really cool. We're seeing them in like peacock green and bright pink and candy apple and all these different sort of really kind of cool colors. Um, again, it's a look. It's a specific look, I think, for people that really, really want a big, bold, colorful kitchen. And they're not afraid to, you know, break up that white kitchen that we have seen that is timeless, that will always kind of be a little bit on trend. Like, I don't think a white kitchen's ever going away, but I do love that people are getting creative and having a little bit of fun with color. I also think that we've seen the stainless steel quite a lot, and I think we're all a little bit sick of stainless steel. It's just so cold and lifeless, and I will admit that these are pretty fun. So although this isn't my taste, I love that it's other people's taste because I get to enjoy all these beautiful, colorful rooms and all these really big, bold, colorful appliances. So very neat very retro, definitely back. Okay, next up on my list of trends that have made a comeback is modular furniture. So this is something I haven't really talked about. Well, we've talked about it on the edges, but we never really had a conversation about modular furniture. So this is something that I feel, again, in the 70s, I wanna go back to the 70s, where this was so, so, so popular, to have these sort of sofas that could be configured in lots of sort of different ways, right? There was so many different ones. I'm gonna show a bunch of them. I've talked about them on this channel, but these are like specific, sort of designs that have really made a comeback. But the point is here is that I feel like in the 70s, you really saw this trend towards modularity. People being able to customize these different sort of sofa combinations or different sort of tables or whatever, and you're able to sort of adapt to your individual circumstances, which was really, really neat. So the idea here basically is oftentimes, especially I'll just talk about couches for a minute, you're buying these little squares and then you're able to kind of configure how you want to do it. So you can buy kind of one with a little armrest over here. You can buy one ottoman over here and then you can do a corner piece and you could do whatever sort of funky little cool combination you want right in your conversation pit or your sunken living room. I mean, how 70s cool is that, right? Like you were able to do that back then. And then I feel like we moved into an era of where, you know, modern design sort of maybe made a comeback. And I just feel like a lot of the furniture became very like structured and it became a lot less modular where it was just, you know, here's your couch, boom, there you go. And the sectionals were the sectionals and they were sort of manufactured and you just buy the one that you have. And like, there wasn't really a whole lot of different uh, modularity or combinations that you could buy. You were sort of, you were kind of given whatever, you know, you bought and that was kind of it. I've noticed in the last couple of years, not only cause these, 70s, you know, like the Mario Bellini sofa, um, all that sort of stuff is, is definitely making a comeback, as we all know, and I've talked about it on this channel. But even just modern designs are coming out. You've got ones from Crate and Barrel. You've got all the, almost all of Rove Concepts, I think, at this point, um, sofas are modular. You're seeing so many of these modular sofas where you're buying them in these sort of little squares, and you're able to sort of put them in whatever combination you want. So you don't have to go with the 70s retro design. A lot of these really current ones. And then, of course, we have Restoration Hardware, good old RH coming out with the super, super popular, even if I think a little bit overrated, Cloud Sofa, which is a modular design. And I think that's really, really cool because you are able to customize it depending on the size of your living room because we all don't have the same size living room. We all want different configurations. So really neat, you buy all these different sort of pieces, you fit it together however you want. I think that's neat. You're seeing this also kind of same logic. And now I feel like all that stuff is making a little bit more of a comeback because manufacturers are realizing that, you know, not everybody, a one size fits all, does not fit for everybody. So now they're sort of starting to play with all these different modular sort of designs. And I think that's really, really cool. I hope this is a trend that continues. Why did this ever go away? Okay, next up, we're going to be talking about like maximalism. Maximalism is here. I'm gonna have to do a video just dedicated on the subject. I know I have to. Maximalism is so like, it just has like a definite sort of 80s vibe, right? Like it's definitely got a lot of, I mean, it comes and goes all the time and maximalism is kind of whatever you want to make of it. But I would say this is a trend that is definitely back again. People are a little bit tired of the minimalism. Some people are, not everybody. A lot of people still love minimalism and that's fine. But a lot of people are really looking for like, kind of looking at all these minimalist sort of museum spaces and going like, okay, look where's all your stuff? Where's the fun? Where's the personality? Where, what? Come on, like, let's get all the decor. Let's get the really funky stuff. Let's kind of like fill it full of energy and personality and storytelling and all that fun stuff that people sometimes, some people really want in their space. That has really gone away for the last decade or so, but it is back in a big way because people are looking to do more storytelling and showing more personality in their space. They want to create something that's really interesting and uniquely their own. They don't want this sort of space that's like a void of all stuff. They want a space that really reflects 
them and it's got sort of their little trinkets and their personality and all their stuff that they sort of want to bring into their space. Not cluttered, we're not talking about clutter, we're talking about purposeful, intentional decor and furniture items that are in your space that really reflect you and feel something that is uniquely your own and is not afraid to fill it full of interesting, cool trinkets. And I feel like that's something that we have seen in decades past that is definitely back. So the minimalism, I wouldn't say it's dead, but I would say um, there's a pendulum swing and we are moving in with a trend of maximalism for a lot of people. And I think that's really neat. Not necessarily my style, but um, that's okay. Just because something's not my style doesn't mean it's not good. Like it can still be great and not be my style, right? Okay, and then the next trend here uh, is going to be workspaces. Now this one is, in my opinion, completely pandemic driven, right? This is something that in the post pandemic, flexible hybrid model, what, I mean, what are we talking? What, what are we talking about here, right? Like the, all these terms are being thrown around. I feel like uh, everybody's working from home, but only part time, but you know, like people want people back in the office, but they don't want to go because turns out offices are not very fun sometimes. And like, you know, pe people got really comfortable working from home. But when we worked from home, I think a lot of people realized that when you want to do work, like actually do work, <laughs> right? Not just like sit and watch Price is Right or something while you're pretending that you're working. You know, when you actually want to do work, turns out, you know, a laptop sitting on your lap in, on the couch isn't a very ergonomic or conducive work environment for productivity. So I do think this is completely a post-pandemic trend that will definitely continue to grow, which is people clearly marking out areas for where they are going to do work. This was something that we saw you know, in the 90s into the 2000s where you had a place that was an office, a place where you actually go do work. It didn't have to be a full office, although that can be obviously really great to have the full office, but even just like a little nook in the corner or even just like a closet that you've converted into a little kind of office space, a little area that you can put a desk, that you can put your computer, your laptop, that you can have an office chair, a little place that you can make your own, but that it is productive. It is a place for you to do work and not a place for lounging and pretending to work, right? That was fun for a little bit, but that uh, turns out not really going to be something that's going to work for people, I think, long term. So this is, I think, a trend that we will continue to see grow, something that is going to be even more popular in the future as we sort of navigate into this new post-pandemic world of, you know, flexible workspaces where people sometimes work at the office or work at a job site or whatever. But sometimes, you know, if you can work at home, why not? It makes life a little bit more easy and flexible for employees, which I think is a wonderful thing. But in order to do it and to do it effectively, you need to carve out a space for yourself. And I think that is a trend that we're going to see, these really well-designed, intentional spaces for people to do productive work. I'm here for it. I think it's something that's really cool. And I think it's gonna create an environment where we can have a little bit more flexibility in our lives. I love it. I mean, look, I'm a person who makes money apparently sitting in my living room talking to you guys to a camera, like talking to a camera lens. So, I mean, I am the epitome of the post-pandemic flexible work environment thingy, whatever this is. So I think it's great that people are a little bit more flexible with their work environments. I love to see it, but you do need to have a space, take it from me, who's worked from home for a while. Um, you need to have a space that you can carve out that is uniquely your own for productive work. So I'm here for that. Okay, that's it for me for today, you guys. I'm gonna throw here to my video on 2022 interior design styles because I talked about war minimalism, I talked about maximalism, and both those are featured, oh, and Art Deco, and all those are featured in that video. So feel free to go click on that one, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks, bye.